you go, Dave. All right, 6 p.m. We'll call this regular village board meeting to order. If you all please join me in a moment of silence. And the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you take the roll, please? Trustee Mann. Present. Trustee Charles. Present. Trustee Mann. Present. Trustee Detmers. Here. Trustee Gerber. Here. Trustee Scherschel. Here. Village President Kimsey. Present. Any public announcements this evening? None. Public comments regarding agenda topics? None emailed in. Hearing none. We move to the consent agenda. Could I have a motion to put the consent agenda on the table? I'll make that motion. Trustee Miles made a motion to have a second. I'll second. Second by Trustee Mann. Discussion regarding the minutes or the warrants? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you take a vote? Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Charo. Yes. Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Detmers. Yes. Trustee Gerber. Yes. Trustee Scherchel. Yes. No old business under new business. Item one is an ordinance approving a proposal from Bank of Springfield to refinance the village's water tower and ground storage tank painting project. A motion to bring this to the table, please. I'll make that motion. Trustee Charles made a motion to have a second. I'll second. Second by Trustee Mao. Uh, this will refinance the remaining 65 months, correct, Sherry? Yeah. 65 months on the loan that was used to repaint and rehab the tower and the storage tank. Uh, rate offered 1.05%. So with a projected savings of $45,000 over the remaining five years and five months. Any further discussion or questions? What was the rate before the refinance? It's up at the top of that sheet, Dave, I think. 2.29. Two I think it's on the first sheet. No, not the ordinance on the... We're saving a point asset. or two, essentially. Is what it's over a point and a half. Saving $45,000. Well, yeah, I just didn't know the... Yeah. Two, 298 was the current one. So almost two full points. Almost two points. Yeah. Is the RFP result the exhibit A? Yes. continue to look at all that we can go after doing. Yeah, that was when they were due, right? Well, the date that was listed. So the question would be, do you want to defer the savings for two more weeks or just take it time the paperwork and move on? They're not going to change. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk, to take a vote. Trustee Mann. Yes. Trustee Charo. Yes. Trustee Mao. Yes. Trustee Detmers. Yes. Trustee Gerger. Yes. Trustee Scherchel. Yes. Item two is an ordinance approving the local coronavirus urgent remediation emergency support program. Kind of a motion to bring this to the floor. I'll make that motion. Trustee Mao has made a motion to have a second. Second. Second by Trustee Charo, this is the agreement with the state of Illinois and DCEO uh, to participate in the local cures program. Any further discussion regarding? One thing I have is on the uh, publication board, I didn't see that uh, the 
This is a copy of the agreement. If you go to the very last page, attachment is the ordinance the first attachment is this which is this which is the exhibit a financial support conditions and certification which is the other attachment that you were looking at right there with it. all right any further questions or discussion hearing none madam clerk trustee man yes trustee charo yes trustee man yes trustee detmers yes trustee gerger yes trustee Churchill. yes Item three is an ordinance approving the bid for tree removal and line clearance services. A motion to bring this to the table. I'll make the motion. Trustee Miles made a motion to have a second. Second. Second by Trustee Charles. The discussion regarding this ordinance. Only one bond, right? Yeah. Where did we post? In the Clarion. Just in the Clarion? We always just post in the Clarion. Oh, we did post it one other place. Shane sent it to the IBW Union Hall because the uh, guys that are qualified to trim in those areas have to be go through the IBW. So, it was. My only question, and it's probably not uncommon, is just that a lot of the area one was around businesses, and I didn't know if any businesses were responsible for helping maintain those just paying through their utility bills. Anything that was part of the money that uh, Vern had in the budget for tree trimming. And it's also that area over there is the area that causes the most outages. So. You mean Vern or Shane? I'm sorry, Shane. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, <laughs> you guys don't realize how much Vern actually does around here. I start losing oxygen with these masks on and I start getting a little lightheaded. <laughs> I go down, you know. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, would you? Oh, sorry. The proposed ordinance, does it give us a way out of the contract as well? Yeah, it would have to be trimmed. To get those areas trimmed? from the acceptance of this is what's in it, that they're going to clear those lines in those identified areas. Okay. Madam Clerk, would you take roll? Trustee Mann? Yes. Trustee Charo? Yes. Trustee Mann? Yes. Trustee Detmers? Yes. Trustee Gerger? Yes. Trustee Scherschel? Yes. Schedule of meetings will be the Public Properties and Recreation Committee at 6 p.m. on September 14th. Planning Commission will meet 6 p.m. on September 17th. Bills report 6 p.m. September 22nd. Uh, no closed session under this meeting. Is there any additional public comments regarding any village business at this time? Are we going to have a call We're putting that out for bids. So. The last few years, we've only had one bidder, so if they choose not to bid, then we may not have a cleanup week. So, yeah. 
subject to acceptable bids. Yep. And, and if we don't have fall cleanup, then we all get a refund of the fee that we paid. We'll, we'll approach that conversation at an appropriate time. Any further public comments? Hearing none, we entertain a motion to adjourn the board meeting. I'll make that motion. Trustee Charles made a motion of a second. Second. Second by Trustee Mao. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting stands adjourned. It'll take five minutes before we start the committee meeting. Flowered one on tonight, not the sparkly one. That's right. <laughs> Changing it up. Peeling on your toes. Yep. Kind of mixing it up a little. Mm -hmm. You like the flower? It's happy. <laughs> it looks like it's in my hair. I don't have to wear it in my hair. <laughs> those and give them back. <laughs> So you brought a little snack to that little candy kit. It's not Mordock's candy cane. Actually, that, no, it was Mordock because we got him to wear the elf hat, I remember now.
Good, right. Trustee Mann. Present. Trustee Charo. Present. Trustee Mal. Present. Trustee Detmers. Here. Trustee Gerger. Here. Trustee Scherchel. Here. Uh, any public comments on agenda topics? No one texted or uh, emailed in. I'll second. Okay, a couple of items. Uh, mostly uh, engineering activities have been related to uh, motor fuel tax improvements. Um, street crews are continuing to do patching work along Ptarmigan and then have jumped over to uh, Parkview subdivision um, where there's a lot of uh, failed concrete pavement in there as well. So they're continuing to chip away at uh, patching and uh, roadway repairs associated with our MFT program. Uh, we're going to throw out a set of plans for bidding uh, of improvements along Oak Brook, and that's going to be a continuation to the work that we've done over the past couple of years. And this will be uh, the intersection at Acacia, and then uh, a couple hundred feet to the uh, east will be this section, and then we anticipate next year we'll continue from that point and then go to Peachtree. So right now, based on the uh, funding available, uh, we're looking at doing that in two phases. So. This year will be a Acacia intersection, and then next year will be the Peach Tree intersection. Uh, we're also looking at uh, doing some improvements uh, along Garvey uh, at the intersection of Term again. There's some rough pavement, uh, settlement trenches, and so forth there, and doing some concrete patching at that location. Uh, another item that uh, you know has recently come up, we're coordinating with uh, Dustin Patterson in terms of work along the bike trail. Uh, there's two locations in particular. One is the approach pavement at the bridge crossing Plummer. Um, similar to work that we've done on sidewalks at uh, along Plummer at the bridge there at Polcat Creek, the uh, pavement on either side of that bridge is settled. Over the years, there's just been you know, bituminous fill patch, cold patch material put in there. And some of that has started to chip away, uh, causing a hazard for um, uh, users of the trail. So. Similar fashion, we're going to do a concrete, uh, almost like a approach slab, if you will, that's tied to the back of the bridge and then floats on the other side where it butts up to the existing pavement. So settlement will no longer be an issue right at the bridge. Uh, other area uh, in between Walnut and the Plummer uh, Bridge, uh, there's an area of tree roots that have kind of heaved about 130 foot section of the pavement along the bike path. So. Uh, collecting some bids to uh, do that work as well and smooth that out. Uh, also been working with Barry to get him in contact with the uh, state contract for road salt, so have a procurement of that here for the winter. Uh, another item that we continue to work on with Pat, the village's attorney, is a uh, letter of credit work uh, associated with either uh, defunct subdivisions that have outstanding letters of credit and going ahead and uh, claiming those uh, funds for either unimproved areas or latent construction defects. Uh, currently, we're looking at uh, South Park subdivision um, and pursuing that, and then also coordinating with the developer for the Willows to complete uh, sidewalk in that subdivision and to upgrade uh, deficient handicap ramps uh, within that subdivision as well for a final closeout of letter credit. And the only other item is uh, just working with the uh, with Dustin on water main flushing for this fall. Um, CMT's involvement will be limited as we've created the flushing maps and guidelines for the village. Uh, we'll just provide support as needed. But uh, other than that, that's all I had for this evening. Two quick ones. The Oak Brook, is that going to be the same resolution that was used on the east side of the Yes. Yep. Yeah, it'll be replaced and patched in, or replaced with concrete from sidewalk to sidewalk. And you said roughly 100 feet from the to the east. What 
You're probably about 150 to 200 feet. Um, I don't have the exact limits in front of me, but uh, you know, basically we went the 32 foot wide and 130,000 foot long. Um, I have not advanced that. I will continue to work on that, though. Uh, focus has been primarily on MFT uh, over the last period, but uh, we can get that moving. Uh, a lot of that is going to be subject to funding, uh, regardless of the improvement that we come up with, but uh, we will uh, add that as a priority item as well. Jim, hand that off to Vern. Uh, basically, I think what you're looking at is kind of self-explanatory, but uh, what we're doing is updating the local ordinance for basically the kids under the age of 21 and also for the local establishments uh, for bartenders and such. Um, we've had... I won't say we have an uptick in as far as legal consumption of alcohol by minors, but what we have found is a lot of cases are not being prosecuted or, or charges are being dropped. So in this case, um, take some of the burden off my officers. Um, like everything else, we'll go after uh, you know the money aspect of it for uh, you know kids drinking, and we just had one uh, not too long ago. So we want to continue to uh, to thwart that effort if at all possible to keep kids from uh, from underage drinking. The only question I had was in the one part of the ordinance that mentions bartenders uh, fine is two fifty, and then if tax that, it says the minimum fine is five hundred. I don't know if there's a, a, a different meaning for. I was thinking, that, sorry, not the answer for one, but the yeah. bartenders like themselves might have a fee, but then the licensee because of the bartenders is right. five hundred. Right. Okay. Correct. You have. Yeah, you have two separate. You have the owner of the business and then the bartender. So the owner takes one for the bartender and the bartender takes their own personal. Correct. Take-home price. Yep. Take-home price. So a lot of this language exists currently in our ordinances already. This cleans it up and puts it all in one place where it's easier for Chief and his staff to reference. And the thought behind this is real. If you remember with the uh, state's legalization of marijuana, that a lot of the what could be prosecuted criminally was moved as uh, ordinance violations as well, so that you had that avenue is available to you as well. So this is doing a lot of the similar language with these. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Uh, 
any discussion? Yes, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, in the minute that passes this item, it doesn't have the amount, so for any, um, I saw it in there. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Paul. Did you have anything else, Paul? Did you have anything else? No, I just wanted to highlight that. I would just, the first question would be, did Mr. Zizelik work, live there for all 11 years, I assume? Yeah, live there more. Yeah. Then that's what I was wondering. So the time period that we go back, that's just as far as our data goes? Yeah, right. As far as we had data. And could you extrapolate that based on, you know, the, the overage was $112 a month? on average over those 11 years and you could see that they were overcharged for 17 years and make an adjustment. You know what I'm saying? Like they did a nine year. month with the, so there was for the entire time. time. Did you really yeah. have to see this? Yeah. Yeah. My, my consideration would just be that, again, on average over those 11 years, that it's $100 a month that they were overcharged. We know they lived there for 21 years and we can use that average and apply it for the remaining 10 that our data collects because again. But we, I don't know that we even know when the meter was Right, no, we don't. Match. That's my question. Is when the meter was mismatched, and then could we apply that average for those two years? I don't think we have the data of when the meter was mismatched because that was part of that time period. Okay, so that's number one. The second one is just the whole the mismatching thing. You know, how does this? I thought that we had that one event that happened last year and happened again. So the utility commission, we asked that question. Pat was under the impression that more than half has been replaced now. More than half of them mismatched or more than half, more than half no. of the meters that we so we should catch what when we caught one in the first half, right. and now this one's been caught. Um, so there should be less opportunity to catch that many more. And we caught this. Right, I read that that it was caught by a village employee, and I appreciate that that it was brought forth and shared with the homeowner. That's our policy. Yeah. Just uh, constantly frustrating. So, with respect to, I mean, there, there's probably not an amount, and not a large amount considering the total volume that we do, but it would make sense there for there to be an audit of the amount of water consumed according to our vendor versus the amount of water that we sold. And again, I'm guessing that this could have fallen between that gap of error, but, you know, if you buy 10 trucks, and you sell nine of them, you know you have a problem. Mm -hmm. So I would think that that audit would be important to help identify any potential others that might, mm -hmm. that might exist. We, uh, we run those numbers every single month, and every single month, you know, the village has a loss. Every water system has a loss. Sure. There's leaks sure. all over the place, and trying to regulate that down to someone's house is no, impossible. I, I understand that. <clears throat> The, uh, the other thing that we'll do is we hired a company a few years back to go through town and check for leaks. And all you have to do is find one leak and it pays for in the fee of having this company come in. And we saved over $100,000 last year or that year in, uh, in leaks that we found. So. Right. Yeah. And then again, that's the job of there between the vendor and the person who the So to clarify, the most So everybody knows our ordinance only indicates a year mm -hmm. uh, that we go back to the utility to be done. Uh, but for the other person that had a mismatch meter, it's not their fault at all. Um, so we saw the utility to pay. And everyone was in agreement at the utility committee. So we'll need a roll call for this because this is going to get not yet. It has to be voted on. Yeah, yeah you got to do it. Put, make a motion to put it on the consent agenda for the next board yeah. meeting, and the warrant could be there as well as it passes. 
make a motion, have a motion. I'll make a motion for it to be considered in the district court. Trustee Churchill had a second. I'll second. Trustee Deckhurst, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We actually have to approve it. This whole board will vote. You won't need to be here. As long as you vote for my favorite. It sounds like we have the consensus to do it. The indication when they put it on the consent agenda means everybody already agrees. Everybody else is able to vote, but we can't vote for anything. Yeah, I understand. I appreciate it. Thank you. Check is in the mail then after that. Thanks for your help. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your information. All right. Thank you for moving that. Uh, and back to you, village manager. Well, I noticed this past uh, week or two on Channel 20, they've been uh, talking a lot about City of Springfield and utility bills and how high everybody's utility bills. So I took a look at what happened over uh, July and August. And in August of this year, we set a record for the most amount of water that the village uh, sold, 43,290,000 gallons of water. This past month, it was at 39,716,000. June was 32 million. So you can see the big jump between 32 million to 43 million, 11 million get more gallons of water in the month of July than in June. And it pretty much stayed up there for August. I looked at the electricity and the electricity, it was by far, July was the highest month at over 10 million kilowatts. And in August, that number was close to 85 million. Do you know what 8.5? 8.5. 8.5, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So, do you know what last July was for kilowatts? Yeah. I do. Last July was, let's see, the blue one was a little over 8 million kilowatts. So, we went up to 2. 25%. Yeah. Now, the year before that, it almost matches the kilowatt usage uh, that was for the month of our year of 2020, was real, real close to 2018. So that was another really, really hot year. I do not have the numbers for the water from those previous years, but I can get it. But we've been using more water now than we've ever been used before. And we have so many people that come in and get permits for pools and so many people that get permits for sprinklers. You know, they're, they're coming in every single day and you see all of the sprinkler trucks and stuff and the pool trucks. People are on waiting list to get a pool down here, so. I've been getting that question a lot about pools <clears throat> and getting permits and all that. Yeah, it's There was a sewer rate increase, but I think that was two or three months ago. That was towards the beginning of the year when we yeah. moved that. I don't know. Yeah. Can you guys manipulate meters and everything else? We do that all the time, yeah. <laughs> no, you cannot do that. <laughs> Alan, welcome to your first meeting with us. He, sh he shot up straight in our hurry back there. He's awake. <laughs> I think there's a lot of folks that are seriously concerned about this project. It's, it's an off year, and I, I think uh, the, the fact that you, you hear in Springfield and any other communities, a lot of things. I don't know, personally, the, uh, the MVP in our household has been the dishwasher since the stay-at-home orders took effect. Uh, we run that thing constantly now. Uh, and then to spend an entire summer where nobody really could go on vacation. Um, so I think that, you know, it's just, you know, everybody's... Yeah. Um, streaming. Um, so, a lot of that, and the dishwasher is, yes, you can use 
less water in the dishwasher than hand wash. Also wash your, but wash your hands, right? <laughs> yeah. I talked to a few people and they said that, you know, they used to set their thermostats so that during the day it would go up to 78, 79, and then 3 o'clock they would have it start cooling the house down when they come home from work. But there's somebody in the house all day long now. Yeah. So. I think we should also consider looking at the temperature over, over the July and August time period because I think it played a role. It did. We had very little rain. We had a lot of heat. And, but again, I, I think that there are a lot of folks that are very concerned about it. So anything that we can do from a staff to help them understand if there are leaks or issues, I think we should. We still, we still check all the time for leaks. Uh, I would also recommend if there's anything out there like consumer oriented that could explain to uh, consumers how the meters can't be tampered with and they can't be adjusted and here's why if there's any kind of literature the meter company put out uh, with regard to that. A water meter is one of the simplest devices in the world. Right. Water comes in, it goes around in a circle. When it goes around and it turns, it makes that dial spin. That's how it works. It can't spin backwards. It can't spin faster. And you it, can't manipulate it from another location? No. It, it has a manual reading on top of it. And then that sends a signal to the ERT that's on top. And then those two match up. So we always look, if, if we're having a problem, we look at the ERT, we look at the manual reading. This doesn't mess up. The ERT can mess up sometimes. But we always look at that. So that's how we can come back and find out if there was a mistake or something. So to further clarify, the only way there can be a problem is if there's a mismatch with that meter, just like how there's a mismatch with the water meter. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that's the only way that there can be a problem. Exactly. That it's not working. Right. It's you entered in a system correctly. Right. There's a formula that you can add to that. So say, for instance, if you had a 25 base and a 15 ERT, then there's a mathematical formula that says, okay, it's reading this, and I know that's a 15, so I need to take that times 0.75 or 0.08 or something like that. So with the village, though, that being said, so it shows there that you can adjust. Could the village enter into that spreadsheet some different figure to where somebody would be charged higher? Is yep. it possible? Sure, it's possible. If you put a number into that field, okay. that, that's possible. Yes. Uh, who was it? The uh, News Channel 20 uh, did a story on budget billing at CWLP. Mm -hmm. Can you say a few words on our program? Because some people say, well, why doesn't Chatham have that? We do have that. And we do have that. You're right. We have budget billing. We've had it for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, you have to, I think, live here at least a year so that they got a year's worth of utility so that they can estimate what your utility bill should be. And then that's what they base it off of. Now, there are some restrictions that if you have been shut off in the past or you're late paying your bill, we do not offer budget billing to those folks until they can get, I think, a year of, of clean paying their bills. But if they've been late, what's going to do? Yeah. But if anybody wants to know about it, feel free to call the girls in the office and they'll tell them whether they qualify or not. Another thing too that, that I discovered just on our own is we also still qualify for things through Ameren as well. Ameren does a lot of free things since we're all gas customers of Ameren. We still then qualify for a lot of their, their, their uh, benefits as well because they have a lot of government programs that they, that they utilize. So that's another place, another place to check. Um, we you can get things like uh, free smart thermostats. Yeah, um, Nest Nest thermostats, Nest, right? right. And, and those types of things, free of charge. You can get them. I just went on that yesterday, and we do not qualify six two nine. Yes, we do because I have one mm -hmm. sent to my house. So. Well, then how do I? What did I do wrong? I don't know, <laughs> but we do. Because we are gas, we're 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 gas customers, so there are some functions of that that we do qualify for. Speaking of that, is there any programs or any energy efficient um, programs or policies that the IMEA does 
that we can pass on or tell or time to about. time time to time when uh, they will uh, work with uh, some of the local businesses to give discounts on freezers and refrigerators and so that people can replace those those are two items that really really drain the electricity in your house especially if you have really old freezers and if they're all ice packed on the inside the thing just runs and runs and runs it, it it's almost impossible for them to keep up so We do have two one, reasons. One and three. Two yep. so what, what are we doing? One and three. One and three, so we'll be a CC2 and another CC2. Setting the price of the sale of public property and market negotiating matters. Is that a motion to go forward? And we will not cover back. Yeah. I'll make that motion. Yeah, no further business. Correct. Yep. I'll make that motion. Second. 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 Second.